everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I'm back yet again with a little something different. We're gonna try our hand at something I've always wanted to do. Not only just something I've wanted to do, but something I've really wanted to try ever since I was a little kid. We have been taking a look at these NECA Toys Pizza Club Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and what I specifically enjoyed is that each of the four turtles came with a very unique Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pizza with all the crazy toppings that they used to put on there. Which got me thinking, that might be worth trying out. And I'm not joking when I say eat some great food because today we're going to implement that with a little bit of a Toy Shiz cooking show. And we're going to make each of these four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pizzas. Yeah, no joke. This is going to be a lot of fun. So that being said, I hopped over to my local Trader Joe's and then other grocery stores, of course, to complete everything that I would need in order to make these four Pizza Club Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pizzas. And rest assured, all of these ingredients are able to be picked up at your local store, Trader Joe's, Costco, make it real easy. Now, normally I would say I would make my own pizza dough. For this, I'm gonna use the Trader Joe's ready to go plain pizza dough just to keep things simple. If you wanna know what I do with pizza dough, you can ask me down in the comments, but that'll be the main base for today. Now, with Michelangelo's pizza, we're gonna be using some granola and soft licorice twists, no joke. So, we have the granola and licorice pizza, courtesy of Michelangelo. How's this one gonna go? That's anyone's guess, but you can pick up the licorice twists at Trader Joe's, or you could do red vines, whatever you want to do. Not a Vanna Black licorice, no. Red licorice all the way. But the granola, nature's path, organic, you get it, pumpkin seed and flax. Granola should be pretty good. Moving on, we have the <laughs> mild Italian sausage and jelly belly jelly beans. It completes Raphael's sausage and jelly bean pizza. So you can pick ground sausage. You can do any type of sausage that you like, but... Namely, this was in bulk, and you can just use this for other things as well. So, that is what we will be doing for the jelly beans and sausage pizza. Mm. <laughs> then we have the pickles, peanut butter, and avocado pizza. This one, I have, I have high hopes for, to be honest with you. There's a lot of flavors that will be kind of working hopefully within one another the avocado just make sure you get yourself a ripe one get some grillo's pickles you got to go with grillo's if you're going to use pickles and justin's peanut butter is the one that i just so happen to have it's not one that i use all the time i even like just jiffy peanut butter from time to time i was going to use crunchy because that's kind of the peanut butter that i enjoy but because it doesn't say crunchy we'll just go with the classic sort of creamy naturally delicious Peanut butter, of course. And then the main one, the one that I have the highest hopes for in terms of, well, being any type of edible, we have marshmallow and pepperoni pizza, courtesy of Leonardo. So we have jet puffed marshmallows. These ones I'm gonna kind of fiddle around with, kind of see what would work best. I don't think putting them in the oven and cooking the pizza with them will be in my best benefits, but at least we'll have these sliced uncured pepperoni going on that I got from Trader Joe's. So that should be really delicious. And then finally, to make up the sauce and cheese, which you're gonna need a lot of, you can just go Trader Joe's mozzarella cheese. And then my favorite type of pasta sauce, pizza sauce, I always just use Rao. So that's my favorite go-to. So definitely recommend it. I think it's the best tasting, to be honest. So this is your menu for the next well, however long this video turns out to be. And so with that being said, I invite you to sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. We're making some pizzas today based off the original 80s cartoon TMNT along with the new NECA Toys Pizza Club Turtles. Man, oh man, I hope this is good. But in any case, it should be a cowabunga of a good time. Here we go. Now, first and foremost, before we get started, you always wanna make sure you've got your oven on. So first, bake. Then we're going to do 475 starts. We're going to let that heat up. 
we're gonna get everything ready to go for our first pizza. So just make sure you turn the oven on because you don't wanna run into that mistake, that's for sure. Now, while I did get Italian sausages, I'm gonna cut those up into smaller pieces so they cook a whole lot better when you put them on the pizza in the oven. So just get yourself a nice cutting board and then proceed to slice these into chunks. And it's as easy as that. So if you are using a link sausage to chop up like I did, just make sure your knife is really sharp. Otherwise, I suggest just using some ground up sausage. That could probably be the easier route, but we don't do anything easy here. All right, now it's time to deal with the dough. This particular dough from Trader Joe's, roughly you gotta take it out of the fridge about 30 minutes prior to doing anything with it. So just make sure the oven's at 475. It'll take roughly eight to 10 minutes to cook fully. I find that 12 is, is kind of like the sweet spot there, but we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna clean the countertop. You gotta clean that, that's the important thing because we're just gonna lay the flour right down on there and get this all rolled out, ready to go. All right, so now the dough is out of the bag. I just a helpful hand to make sure your hands are covered in flour when you wanna finally mess this thing around and, and get it all ready to go. So kind of just flop it out, grab a rolling pin, or you can do it by hand, it's your call, but just make sure it's properly floured up and ready to go. All right, so rolling pin in hand, you're looking for something like this. I don't like a perfect circle of pizza, more of an oblong, weird shape. We can go with that, but something at least a little bit thin, that's the way to go, especially with this type of crust. And when you kind of have it all ready to go, kind of give it a few tosses if you like, you want to get all fancy, but I find that just kind of having around this consistency works really well. And then before we get started, I always say get yourself a pizza pan with the holes on the bottom and then just lightly put some olive oil, oil of your choice, but preferably olive oil or avocado oil, you can do that. And now we're gonna take that and put it over there. And voila, we got the dough onto the baking sheet. And preferably, like I always say, if you're into pizza, you can get one of the pans like I have with the holes on the bottom. That way, it really helps crispify the crust on the underside, especially in the middle. That's what I found worked best. But now's the most important time. We get to put the toppings on the old dough right in the center, and then you can just kind of spoon it off to the sides and kind of just coat the entire pizza, which works really well. So then basically, yeah, you just want to kind of end up with something like this. Don't let the sauce get too close to the edges. That way you can have a nice crust. One of these days, if, well, this video does well, I'll show you how to make a cheese stuffed crust at home. That's always my favorite, but Ninja Turtles didn't do that on this one. So we just got sauce, cheese, <laughs> sausage and jelly beans going for this. All right, get yourself a big handful of cheese just like this, and then you're gonna wanna just Sprinkle it all over the top. Yeah, you gotta get that all going good. Just make sure. Don't be scared to add a little extra cheese, especially to make this taste better. You gotta get the cheese pull on top of everything else. But yeah, make sure you got enough cheese. There's nothing worse than a pizza with no cheese. I'm the kind of guy that likes a little bit more sauce too, but you find your good medium. You don't wanna put too much sauce, make it kind of watery too. Just keep that in mind. And thus with the mozzarella cheese applied, I'd say we're ready for some toppings action if you ask me. So we got the sausage here now, and I would say just kind of evenly space it out. You don't have to use all of that. I just cut extra, but just kind of go in order, or you can just kind of throw it around and do it true Ninja Turtles style, it's up to you. But just make sure, as I would say, just put enough to really cover the pizza so that every bite, more or less, will have that uh, sausage and or well, jelly beans too, I guess. And thus, now with the sausage being evenly applied, we're gonna ruin it and throw some jelly beans on it. I'm hoping, really do hope, that this is more of a sweet and savory sort of style where the two sugary delights meets with the savory meats and create a very uh, delectable pizza. Uh, and you're gonna see it here first, I guess. So thus, starting off with our templates and then making the real thing here, we have a true sausage and jelly bean pizza. Red for Raphael, after all this is his design. A Little bit of blue, a little bit of green. I don't think there'll be any problem with the jelly beans burning. I would say if anything, they'll probably melt into the cheese, which fingers crossed, that's the outcome. But regardless, very excited. This should be awesome. So this is the start of the jelly bean and sausage pizza by Raphael. Real quick before we throw it in, let's get some fennel seed going. Just a light smattering, not too crazy. And then we'll toss on a little oregano too, just to kind of help with the flavor, just in case, right? <laughs> it's always important to help. Don't forget a little sea salt action just to kind of spruce it up. And there we go, the pizza is ready for the oven. Get her in there 
and we'll see you in about 12 minutes. All right, now I had to go for 15 minutes on this, but there we go. And the jelly beans did exactly what I thought they were gonna do. They kind of melted right into the cheese, but man, that is looking pretty good actually, oddly enough, but it's all about the taste. Let's pull this out and see how this is gonna go. So oddly enough, this actually looks pretty darn cool. As you can clearly see, the, the jelly beans just kind of melted into the cheese, which some of them are still kind of sort of whole. I'm sure that they're gonna be a molten core of uh, jelly bean goodness. All right, let it sit for about two or three minutes here. Now we're gonna cut into this thing, which I can't wait. So let's get this going and hear that crunch you got going. There we go. Ah, there you go. Nice crust going on there. And there you have it. Raphael's sausage and jelly bean pizza. Looks pretty good. Not gonna lie. Now, the most important thing is the cheese pull, of course. I'm not gonna lie. This thing is a uh, molten, but uh, we're gonna kind of pull it. There we go. A little bit of pull. <laughs> So overall, I'm pretty happy with this. This looks pretty good, I have to say. Everything held together. The sausage looks good. You got the jelly beans that kind of melted in, in some cases. Not all of them, like that one's a full bean, but then some of them got the green, the blue. It's all a matter of which one each of them are. I hear cinnamon and assorted flavoring. So it's all about the taste at the end of the day, but let's dig in and see how this is gonna go. Now it's funny, I didn't know what to really expect with this. Sure, we're just getting a sausage pizza, but does the jelly bean actually do anything to the taste. And the fact of the matter is, is that yes, but in a largely positive way. This is a unique pizza. It's funny, it's very Ninja Turtles, of course, but the flavor, the randomness, now, whichever jelly beans you use, red, blue, green, depending on what the flavor of the jelly bean is, then coincides as, as you're eating this usual sausage pizza, it, you get a little blast of flavor from time to time, and that's kind of what's appealing. It was never too overwhelming. It wasn't a gross taste by any mean. It was just a sugary pop of flavor from time to time, and for that alone, it made for a very fun, very interesting topping for a pizza. So yes, I would say this is pretty good. I didn't think it was gonna be good, but it ended up being quite delectable. And I would say ultimately for any of these pizzas, this one is probably the most normal, but probably the one that would also be totally out there of which it would still be tasty. All right, pizza number two, we have pickles, avocado, and peanut butter. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, so now we've done all the basics. We greased up the pan, we got the dough, we got the sauce going, we're ready for the cheese. In terms of what we are putting on this pizza this time around, avocado, probably not a good idea to throw it in with the cooking process. It'll probably just blech it overall. Peanut butter, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do dollops of peanut butter, and then I'm gonna do a few pickles on one side, cooked, and then when it comes out, I'll do the, the normal uncooked from the oven sort of pickles and kind of see how that goes overall. Because this is fun, this is supposed to be a learning process for all of us, so Donatello might be onto something, or this could be really gross. All right, making it rain with the cheese. Cheese is ready to go, now we're gonna head for our toppings. All right, so we have the peanut butter dollops going up. Not gonna lie, not looking too appetizing as it is right now, and especially in doing things like this next, yeah, it's gonna be anyone's guess, but you never know until you try it. So that's what I'm saying. So we'll get the pickles down, and then after it comes out, we'll get the avocado going on top. So let's not forget a little sprinkling of oregano, a little sea salt, and boom, we're ready for Donatello's Pizzeria Delights. <laughs> we're gonna see how this one's gonna go. 15 minutes in the oven. I'll check on it in about 10, 12 minutes. Hopefully the peanut butter kind of liquefies a little bit. We'll see how the pickles fare. Like I said, I'll put the fresh ones on once we have it out, followed up by the avocado, and we'll give it the old taste test. Woo, 15 minutes is up. Look at that, fogged up the lens and everything. But there we go. The pizza is looking pretty good. And the smell of the pickles is actually very pleasant. It's actually right when I opened that, I was like, oh, that smells really good. So we're gonna top the rest of this thing. The peanut butter looks to have fully dissolved as I thought, and we'll get this going. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You have Donatello's pickle, peanut butter, and avocado pizza. And I'm not gonna lie, 
I'm very curious to see how this is going to taste. Now, like I said, we have the one side where I cook the pickles with the entirety of the sauce, the cheese, and the dough, and then I put some fresh pickles on as well, just to kind of see the difference, and then laid on the avocado on top. Don't be afraid to put on the avocado. I love avocado, but like I said, this it surely will be interesting. All right, let's get her all sliced up here. Go slow, you don't wanna ruin the toppings, right? So once again, looking at the Nekatoy's offering of the pickles, peanut butter, and avocado pizza, I would say that in totality, Donatello is stoked. So let's give it the old try -a So for the taste test individually, I have the pickles that I cooked with the pizza here, and then the raw, and then we're gonna see which one actually tastes better if, in fact, there is a difference. Okay, first taste, and th this is what's wild to me. It, it actually tastes good. Like, it's there's nothing that I'm going like, oh my God, I can't finish this. It's a very distinct taste. I would say the peanut butter, probably less is more if you're going to do the more dollop kind of peanut butter dabs. It's very much... A combination of flavors that seemingly goes together. You're going to have the molten cheese and the sauce to deal with, but the pickles mixed with the creaminess of the avocado and then the peanut butter itself, it all goes together. I don't know why that works, why that makes sense, but it does. So that is the cooked pickles. And now we're going to try just the, I guess you could say raw, uncooked pickles. Again, I don't know why that makes sense. Truth be told though, I do like the pickles on after than cooking them with the pizza. I think that you do get a lot more of the pickle taste, which really helps accent the pizza overall. This slice had a smaller dollop of the peanut butter, which I think worked well. And the avocado, again, aids in the creaminess. It goes with the sauce, the cheese. This makes no sense. <laughs> like, I would never go to a pizza place and go, hey, pickles, peanut butter, and avocado, please. But if you want to make this for either your kiddos, family, you're having something wild, a party, something like that, you want to do something fun, this works. I don't know how it works, but it actually tastes pretty good. And I will finish this. I have a whole pizza over here. We're going to finish it. It tastes good. Try it out. I'm not joking you. I think you're going to like it. And we are well on our way to our next pizza, which is going to be Michelangelo's with his granola and licorice pizza. And as you can clearly see what NECA has sculpted, you got those granola bits, and then you have what appears to be black licorice. That's not going to sit well with me. We're going to go red licorice this time around. But black licorice, can't do it. It's just no, no way. Now... One thing earlier in the vid, I did say I got these Trader Joe's soft licorice twists. These are gross. Do not use these. These are probably the worst thing ever. I don't get it. Trader Joe's, what are you doing with these? No bueno whatsoever. So I went to the store and got red vines. You have to get red vines. There is no substitution. These taste the best whatever those Trader Joe's things were. So got original reds. We'll kind of chop these up in half, kind of space it out instead of just being one long red vine. And then when it comes to the granola, I'm thinking that there's two ways this could go. Either I put it on there, cook it, and it burns, or for whatever the details of this is, it could potentially get soft. It could go a lot of different ways, I think, that I'll wait till after as kind of like a topping sort of deal for the pizza. The red vines will go on and then we will cook it and then finally the granola, but you got your sauce, the dough, the cheese, we're ready for toppings. All right, so there we go. There's a good look at the pizza. We're using red vines here, kind of sort of try to mimic what they sculpted with that. And then like I said, we will add this on later. So this is going in the oven for 475. I'm doing it at 15 minutes now. I think that that's really giving it a nice crisp crust. And that's what I look for often when I'm doing more thin crust type pizza. All right, so we're all set for the oven. I'm thinking the red vines will probably largely just kind of melt into the cheese again, much like the jelly beans did on the first pizza. But hey, remains to be seen. That's why we're doing this. It's always fun to kind of check this out. So see you guys in 15 minutes. All right, Whew, there we go. Look at all that steamed up. So there we go. We have the pizza and the red vines, which 
look a little black, not gonna lie. So we're gonna yank this out. Probably a good idea to put the whole granola on there. So it would seem, yeah, the, the red vines did not melt like I really thought that they would. They just kind of, well, burned. <laughs> and hey, you know, it still could taste good. Let's throw the granola on there. All right, so we're just gonna sprinkle it on top. I kind of, I'm gonna make it, uh, kind of break it up a little bit just to really, you know, it's going everywhere, but you get the idea. You don't want too big a chunks on this, I don't think. At least that's not what I would prefer. It's thoroughly covered here and just get it. That, I mean, look how amazing that looks. This is probably the worst one out of them so far. <laughs> Not that appetizing. However, you never know until you try it. It really is about the cheese and the sauce. Sometimes it works with the toppings presented and sometimes it doesn't. So oddly enough, as we intentionally avoided the black licorice in looking at this granola and licorice pizza from Michelangelo, it kind of has turned into black licorice, essentially. Maybe it started out as red licorice and Mikey left it in the oven way too long and then uh, you have this marvelous masterpiece. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I hope you guys are all enjoying this. Let's slice her up. Well, at least it's crispy in the middle. That's always a plus. And they seem to be cutting fairly well, so that's always a good thing. So now that it's all cut up, it is definitely not the most appealing of the pizzas that I have made thus far. However, it's all about the taste. So let's give it a go-see. And there we have it. So in all honesty, yeah, this one kind of went exactly how I thought it was going to be, but for opposite reasons. The granola actually works with the pizza, whereas the red vines doesn't do what the jelly beans did. It often has an unsettling type taste after when it kind of has melded with the cheese. It must be the flavor of the red vines. This one is purely for fun. I would not recommend this overall. It's just, oh, that was fun to make because taste-wise, no, no one should be combining these two. Although, like I said, the granola was the best aspect. Anyways, on to the final pizza. Which finally brings us to the last pizza of our four pizza endeavor. And this one comes courtesy of Leonardo. We have his pepperoni and marshmallow delights. <laughs> I'm sure. I've already got the pizza made up. We're going big on this one. Nice, big pizza, a lot of sauce, extra cheese. We've got our pepperoni, sliced, uncured. Pepperoni in general. Choose your pepperoni at your leisure. Always tastes good, can't go wrong. We have the marshmallows on this side. What I'm gonna do is put the pepperoni onto the pizza, get it cooking. Five minutes before this pizza comes out, I'm gonna cut these Jet Puff marshmallows in half and lay them on the pizza. So the last five minutes, they get all golden brown and they don't burn. And well, we learned our lesson from the red vines. <laughs> so let's get the pepperoni on this pizza and get things a go-go. All right, and we are all pepperonied up, extra pepperoni this time around. By the way, if you've never tried this pepperoni, it's pretty darn good. It's my first time trying it. Highly recommend it. Over on the marshmallow end, got them all chopped up. We're gonna put this baby in the oven, about 10, 12 minutes, but the last five, we'll check on it, throw the marshmallows on, get them all nice and toasty, and complete Leonardo's pepperoni and marshmallow pizza. Here we go. Final thoughts before I throw this in. I really do think that this one is going to work well together in terms of the meats. And then the sweets. So we'll see how that kind of goes together. But this is the one that I thought out of all of them, this will be the best tasting one. I hope I'm not wrong. I was wrong about that pickled thing and that actually turned out pretty good. In any case, see you in a few minutes. All right, and that is the 10 minute mark. This pepperoni pizza is in dire need of some marshmallows. We're gonna yank it out, put some marshmallows on it and throw it back in for about another four to five minutes. All right, and the marshmallows have been applied. Now we're gonna keep an eye on this because we don't want these things flaming up, getting too toasty. We want a nice golden brown, but nothing that's uh, catching a blaze if it gets my drift. So about four to five minutes, keeping an eye on it. Here we go. All right, and that has been four minutes. I'm not gonna go any further. I'm thinking that these are nice and toasty. They look fantastic. And just the aroma I'm getting 
from the oven right now, it, it smells amazing. So I'm really thinking this is gonna be the number one pizza out of the four that we made. So let's yank it out and take a look. And there you have it, Leonardo's pepperoni and marshmallow pizza. And the marshmallows, they, they came right out of the oven and they just kind of deflated a little bit, but they look really good. And just presentation wise, it almost looks like blobs of cheese, if I'm being honest, but we all know it's not. But there's plenty of cheese on this thing. So to go from Leonardo's pepperoni and marshmallow sculpted pizza, to now the real life thing. I cannot wait to try this. Man, I hope that this tastes good. And I gotta say, that carved up really nicely. Everything held together. The crust is nice and crisp on this. Plenty of meat, plenty of cheese, plenty of marshmallow. Let's see how it tastes. And just as a heads up, I got this all nice and sliced up. However, I'll tell you, this thing is nuclear hot. Just give it a few minutes before you dive in, especially if you're making this for the little ones because on top of the marshmallows being nuclear, you also have cheese, the sauce, everything else. Give it a few minutes before you start dining in. All right, so honest thoughts on this one. This one actually is my second piece already. It's one of those things where I feel like you kind of have to eat at least one slice to kind of fully understand the flavors you got going on. You think it's a pepperoni pizza, but the marshmallows are very sweet. It was a lot sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Not quite the sweetness that we got with the sausage and jelly bean. This one tastes a lot different. It might be for certain people that like a little bit more of a sweet, sweet tooth kind of endeavor. This one to me is pretty good. It's certainly not the worst one, but it's definitely not the best one but you definitely wanna try it. It's all about the ingredients too. If you got good sauce, good cheese, pepperoni, different marshmallows maybe next time, it all depends. But for the time being, I would say this one is definitely a good try, but not really all that great. So now that's actually gonna wrap it up for my first Toysh's cooking show. I hope you guys all had an absolute blast doing this. I know that I certainly did. I certainly learned a lot. Number one, I have so much greater respect for anyone that decides to film themselves making food. Just the time and energy put into making this look good, my hat is off to you. It is not easy. It's certainly not like doing any type of toy business, that's for sure. But this was just a blast to do. Again, it's something I've always wanted to do. And with the new Pizza Club Turtles, I thought, well, that would be the perfect time to do so. Michelangelo, to rank these, comes in fourth place. The granola and licorice pizza didn't work out. It's just not some flavor combinations that work well together. It's just not a thing. Also, the taste of a cooked, <laughs> we'll say red vine, is not the thing. But the granola, not too bad itself. But you're definitely taking home fourth. Next up is Leonardo with his pepperoni and marshmallow pizza. And this was the one that I thought would be the sure thing. And ultimately, too sweet for me. Not necessarily gonna be too sweet for you, but if you do try it, let me know what you ultimately think. But it's curious to me, thinking one way, trying it now, and then knowing full hand, no, it's just not something for me, which, lends itself to the immediate saying of don't judge a book by its cover, don't judge a pizza by its topping, which leads us to Raphael, which is fairly simplistic. But this one was fun because you have the protein meat elements, you got the cheese, you got the sauce, and then you had the jelly bean sugary elements. So it was savory and sweet, but it was kind of a, a fun endeavor because the various jelly bean flavors, you don't really know what they're going to be. So in eating the pizza, you would have this burst of flavor and it continued in not really knowing which was going to be next. So that was kind of fun. It had the elements of this is a crazy looking pizza. It's certainly edible and it's fun. So I think out of all of them, the kiddos would probably definitely enjoy that. They would probably also enjoy the pepperoni and marshmallow, but that's up to you on how you want to do it, which oddly enough, and see, that's what makes this so much fun. 
Never thought the avocado, peanut butter, and pickles, who would have thunk it? It's the sheer surprise of all those flavors working together to create something that's actually pretty delicious, oddly enough. You have to try it for yourself. Again, it's not going to be for everyone, but I'm more impressed that they took three random, just random ingredients, and somehow it all works. So Donatello definitely wins for me, and that will conclude our TMNT 80s pizza challenge. And I invite you all out there to take it, to try it for yourself, because you never know until you try it. And for those of you at home that you like this video, please let me know your thoughts on it. And also, if you would like to see more of this, more endeavors, not necessarily Ninja Turtles, but other areas of pop culture making the foods from that, I would love to do it. And if you have any suggestions, perhaps for a round two later down the road, I would love to make more Ninja Turtle pizzas. I know there's ones with ice cream. There's so many different things. I could even do all four of these again and then try to improve upon the recipe, see how I could change it, see what would actually be good, but still utilizing the same ingredients. So I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed this. I know I did. And thanks again to Negatoys for making these TMNT figures. And then in looking at them, getting the idea to then take this on, make these pizzas. I love cooking. It's one of my greatest pleasures, greatest pastimes. There's no better way to just sit back and relax with someone than with some good eats. So you've seen and eaten my thoughts with me. And now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything pizza. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee. Eat some great food. Ah! But most importantly, remember, when it comes to wackadoo pizza toppings, nothing is off the table until you try it and see for yourself. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.